The girl whom Al Pacino called the most poetic actress of Hollywood made a huge change in the film industry during the 60s. Julie Christie will remain one of the most famous actresses of old Hollywood. Let's take a look at how she managed to rise to fame from scratch. What made Julie interested in acting? Julie Christie was born on the 14th of April, 1940 in Chabwa, Assam, India. Her upbringing was quite peaceful. Her father was a tea planter in India and her mother was a painter. Julie lived the first few years of her life living with her parents in India, where she was mostly raised on her father's plantation. When she was old enough to get an education, her parents decided to send her to English to continue her studies. Julie fully finished her studies in France, where she had gone to learn French in hopes of being a linguist in the future. Since she was young, Julie enjoyed enjoyed the freedom she had traveling Europe and developed a bohemian lifestyle along the way. This was right before she decided to continue her studies in London's Central School of Speech Training. Julie made her first professional debut in 1957, when she appeared in the Frinton Repertory of Essex. Even though she was making performances here and there, Julie didn't enjoy the process of it. The reason why she did it was that the whole thing allowed her to travel to different places all the time. All the traveling she did led her to be part of her very first professional debut in America, where she acted in the 1961 science fiction series called A for Andromeda. It was during that experience where Julie found out that she was passionate about acting. One year later, she ended up releasing her very first film, which was a comedy called Crooks Anonymous. This was followed by an even bigger opportunity in yet another comedy film called The Fast Lady, released in the same year. She got the attention of the Bond producers. After gaining some recognition in the Hollywood industry, she got the attention of the producers of the James Bond series, who were mesmerized by the young and talented actress. Julie was then offered an opportunity to work with them in the 1962 film Dr. No, but was later rejected because according to producers, Julie's breasts were not big enough for the role. The role later got handed to Ursula Andress. Julie just went off to work with director John Schleisinger, who would be the one responsible for kicking her career into high gear. The director first chose her as a replacement actress for the 1963 film called Billy Liar. Here, Julie played Liz, and her performance in the show was pretty impressive. This later led her to become an icon of British filmography. Her acting skills and ability to get along with crew members and producers made her rise to fame within a couple of years. In 1965, she started working with John Ford in a film called The Warlord. She would work with John Ford again in Young Cassidy as a young hooker, but after ending the filming process, she was denied payment from the studio she worked with. This would lead Julie to find a better working environment where she could pursue her acting skills. The peak of Julie's career even though British magazines portrayed Julie as a newcomer in the film industry by the mid-60s, she had already been a part of many major films. But it wasn't until 1965 when she released her best movie yet, considered as a seminal swinging 60s film called Darling, directed by Schleisinger. This led Julie to back up with a long resume of acting experience, which made it easy for her to get hired in other projects. John Schleisinger immediately cast Julie for the part of Shirley MacLaine, who was the sister of the man who would become Julie's long-term partner in Paramore during the 70s, Warren Beatty. Some actors, such as Ron Steiger, have even claimed that Julie would later give up her career in acting for the actor. By the end of the 1960s, Julie was a celebrity and commanded a price of at least $400,000 per movie. She was more focused on artistic films since she saw them as such, and followed up with the 1966 movie called Fahrenheit 451, directed by the legendary Francois Truffaut. However, the film was considered a flop because the director didn't know how to talk English well and would get into frequent misunderstandings with the male co-stars of the show, Oscar Werner. Oscar was just the replacement of Terrence Stamp, who was originally thought out to play in the film, but he later refused due to a breaking up with a short-lived romance with Julie. The Stamp had ego problems and would refuse to work alongside Julie in the show. It was either him or Julie. The film had more drama off-camera than it did on-camera which led it to become an interesting flop. In 1968, Julie had her first box office hit when she acted in a movie called Petulia alongside George C., a co-star she had already worked with before. The film was considered as one of the most successful films of the 60s, but as surprising as it can be, it was still underrated compared to other hit films. In the beginning, the casting crew 
insisted on Julie to be a part of the movie because it was not complete without her presence, despite George C. Scott and Shirley Knight being a part of it. The lead role was perfectly made to suit only her and no other, and the show would not start filming without her. At this point, Julie would reach the peak of her acting career, Julie Christie's downfall. Julie went on to play in numerous films in the following decade as she was so high in demand. Offers became too frequent, and she even started rejecting more roles than she would accept. She even rejected appearing in the popular 1971 film Nicholas and Alexandra in the role of the Russian Empress. But she did appear in the 1973 film Don't Look Now. During this period, she also had an affair with famous actor Beatty, but broke up with him after she found out his negative opinion towards women. It was not until 1981 when her downfall would approach after she refused to work in the movie called Reds. She simply rejected the role because she thought that it was better if an American play it rather than her. Right after that, her demands decreased drastically and this made her move back to the UK where she was still in high demand. But instead of being involved in films, Julie started focusing on political and social causes that included nuclear disarmament and animal rights. The movies she did appear in were mostly driven by her social consciousness. She took part in The Return of the Soldier alongside Glenda Jackson and Alan Bates, in The Gold Diggers, where she appeared in the first feature-length film of Sally Potter, and Heat and Dust, produced by director Merchant Ivory. After this point, Julie started to fade away slowly from the filming industry. She then announced her retirement during the 80s. In 1990, she made a few appearances in shows and took up small parts in the film. She got massive attention after getting married to a younger actor named Nick Nolte and even got nominated by her third Oscar nomination. She's now 80, living at Wales, and as beautiful as ever. Did you enjoy this video? Make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos on iconic stars from old Hollywood. Thank you for your support. See you in the next video.